Ooh, hello everybody, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? Uh, today we're just going to do another weapon chat here. Just got to move the cover paper here. Sorry about the crinkling. Okay. Alright, I'm officially switching to night shift. So, this is uh, late at night. I did an extra shift this week, so I'm kind of recovered today. Kind of slept till like three in the afternoon because I covered a shift. <laughs> Somebody that uh, called in sick, so I was on nights anyway, so it just helped me trans transition uh, to the night shift anyway. So all good, a little bit extra money, I guess. But okay, I've been working on three ten. I uh, filled in a bit more uh, when I had last diamond painted earlier <laughs> this week. So I'll just put that 310 away for now and we'll work on a color during the whip and chat here. Okay, next color looks like uh, upside down tetramino, but yeah, I'll show you what we're working on. What I'm working on. <laughs> what we're working on. You're just watching. <laughs> For them. Okay, so it's the Treasure Studios art canvas. Okay, this is it. Uh, Night Horse by Polina Bubsheva, 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, square drill, mounted film adhesive. Uh, all their uh, contact information. This is an older canvas, like an older generation canvas. I got it a while ago but we're just uh, doing it now. So it's not quite as fancy as probably the updated canvases that I get, but anyway. Yeah, it's just 30 regular DMC colors. Uh, no Aurora Borealis drills or ABs. They're the extra sparkler, but I'll just keep defining that. Yeah, it's just 30 regular DMC colors, but yeah, it's a pretty cool picture thus far. Okay, so I'll get 28 out, and uh, we'll just do this tetramino kind of piece. Upside down tetramino. Yeah, just to uh, do some color during the whip and chat here. It is mostly going to be his face. This is like a skin tone, but I'm seeing a couple. Yeah, upside down tetraminos uh, on the side here. So I'll do over here first so that I can see, and then I'll work on his face. The knight's face. Okay, 28. Hopefully everybody's doing good. I keep seeing awesome looking uh, landscape uh, canvases uh, from Dreamers Designs. Like they're releasing a whole bunch of really nice landscapes. Not that I'm exclusive to any diamond painting company, but holy cow, the landscapes look beautiful. They're new releases. I think they, it's a new artist or something. I just keep seeing it <laughs> pop up on my Instagram news feed. So it's like, okay, let's go over here. Yeah, uh, not exclusive to like any diamond painting company per se, but yeah, uh, I just see advertisements on uh, Facebook and Instagram respectively mostly Instagram but yeah some really nice uh, canvases out there okay just kind of looking just kind of everywhere to an extent okay there's one up there yeah I'm probably just gonna be like all over the place in this section that's okay just trying to do the symbols systematically here without ruining the adhesive. <laughs> Alright. Okay, there's one there. Yeah, there's just a few over here in this cluster. Symbols. Yeah, it. So, this is like the horse's head here. And, yeah, obviously the knight's face. This is like the halfway point of the canvas, the halfway row. row. So, yeah, just 
taking my time uh, to get through this canvas. It's a uh, pretty uh, busy symbol wise in this section. <laughs> and pretty soon I'm just gonna have like dark black colors and blues to worry about. <laughs> this is like the most colorful part of the canvas in the center here. Yeah, the knight's face and where the horse is and then the rest is like stormy sky and the rest of the horse's head of course but yeah it gets pretty dark after <laughs> pretty dark colors uh, for the rest of the canvas it might go faster because uh, less colors but yeah it's just gonna be sky uh, soon enough on this canvas so yeah it might go faster less colors uh, yeah so that'll be nice and then uh can uh, just jump into another canvas i'm pretty sure i said i'd do a craftably canvas or something but uh, we'll see yeah i usually tend to stick with that uh if I could find like a winter themed kind of canvas to do in between just to kind of make a seasonal kind of uh, section maybe that's what I'll do next oh it's late fall here in Canada so I probably won't do something like Christmas themed but let's see if I can find something winter themed maybe to do next just to kind of tie it in but not be like Christmas like Christmas in your face <laughs> just a nice winter scene or something so I'll figure that out uh, to get through this canvas first and then yeah I'll definitely consider doing something winter themed yeah I think that's what I'll do next <laughs> oh, see what craftably has and see if I can get it in a relatively decent time frame. Yeah, because I'm... I love Diamond Art Club. I love this Treasure Studios Arts canvas, but... Yeah, I do have Dreamers Designs. A couple of those. I don't think they're winter-themed, but I said I'd do a craftably, so... Yeah, man. Just doing a a few companies that I'm familiar with, and uh, some that yeah I could try out, but yeah, it's just based on what I know so far. Yeah, I just don't want to do like Diamond Art Club like all the time. Yeah, <laughs> so I had a few other canvases. Yeah, I just won't do Diamond Art Club after Diamond Art Club. Yeah, I'll just get... <laughs> I'll get tedious after a while. <laughs> like, yeah, so I have other brands of canvases sitting here. But realistically all the same. It's still diamond painting, so that's how I look at it. <laughs> yeah. Nothing against any companies or anything. Like, I'm just trying not to... Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to spread it out a bit. <laughs> yeah, I basically just want to diamond paint something. <laughs> just find a really cool picture. And uh, yeah, just diamond paint. Because when I'm not recording, I do try to come out here and uh, fill in these sections. Is uh, when I record, it's like only like a little, literally a little over an hour of diamond painting. But when I'm not recording, I do try to um, fill the section, like get the get ahead with the canvas that I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah, and since I'm going back to nights, it yeah, I sleep during the day, so. Is it tricky to record on days that I work? Well, when I'm off, 
yeah, I'll for sure find time to record. Yeah, I myself will probably never have a posting schedule, a recording schedule for YouTube videos. I just record when I can. Yeah, so. I'd say just hit the notification bell <laughs> and subscribe if you want to. <laughs> it's an option. I will have my social media information in the description below and I'll mention that again at the end of the the hour for sure. It's kind of my outro thing. But nearly every video I have posted uh, has my social media information in it. Yeah, I'm not one who really likes to spam that I have a YouTube channel. I, I don't want to be overbearing. <laughs> Yeah, I've mentioned to a couple people that I know that I have a YouTube channel, but it's, I don't. <laughs> I'm just not going to push it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like pushing that kind of stuff onto people. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Check it out. Yeah, you probably have nothing better else better to do. So, hey, just look at a diamond painting channel. It's like... I get shown like a multitude of things when, or you get shown a multitude of things when you're on social media. Like you're just bombarded with information, pictures, data. Yeah, that that's a lot to take in in a day, and to process it, or or is it just a, like a blur? Sometimes you just seen certain ads or posts like so many times and it's just like just a casual scroll through <laughs> it can be a good thing can be not so good of course uh, what appears in your news feed in social media is hopefully based on what you like not annoying ads or whatever but yeah you just look up one thing on Google or something, and then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, you're getting ads for stuff that you recently looked up. So that's an algorithm. <laughs> that's what you call an alg algorithm, uh, where search engine kind of keeps track of your surfing behaviors or purchasing behaviors even. We'll just say surfing, like web searches and stuff on the internet. Yeah, somehow just kind of like building an art. It's like teaching the artificial intelligence, the, trying to dig up more results and all that. Yeah, just collecting information and just evolving the AI. I think uh, my mom's Apple iPhone is basically to the point where it's uh, telling where her where she should be on certain days. Because <laughs> she goes to grocery stores on certain days, like almost like the same day every week. Because of the whole COVID protocol thing. You know, only one family member per household. But yeah, I think that's uh, been a little calmed down a bit. Because I've gone in with my dad. Like to the grocery store. Just to help him find stuff. Or just for the giggles. It's like... Yeah, a few months ago it was just one person per household 
could go into the store, the grocery store. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Now it's, yeah, you still have to wear a mask and, yeah, go in and, it's, yeah, you can have a couple of people in there. And I think they just took the directional arrows. You'd, you still have to go one way down an aisle so that you're not, they're not getting crowded or something. Yeah, it's, it's calmed down a bit. Yeah, the limit some limitations have been lifted, but it's not yeah, as doesn't feel as strict or nerve wracking to go into the store now at this point. Here in Ontario anyway, Canada. It may be different elsewhere. Like, just for COVID safety protocols, that is. I, I'd hope everybody would feel safe going into a store in general. I hope that's a thing. Not having to worry about uh, being in physical danger or something. Like shootings and stuff. Uh, heard that recently and yeah various places but yeah just even like Toronto uh, just somebody going to like a restaurant or something and they got shot case of mistaken identity or something like yikes yeah it, it's just crazy what can happen out there not the happiest stuff but yeah that's just seems like Toronto like 24 7 kind of thing there's always something happening I don't know if it would match New York in terms of the city that never sleeps I think yeah I'm pretty sure Toronto Uh, functions day and night to a certain extent. Now that uh, limitations have been lifted, oh, I'm pretty sure there's still nightlife or nightlife again at this point, but I don't know 100%. I just live in a small town. Like, yeah, I only hear about Toronto and st stuff on the news. Yeah, I just hear about this big city stuff on the news or on uh, MSNBC, that kind of thing. I just hear about that, what happens in the U.S. and all that on the news. It's a glimpse, it's an idea of what it's like, but uh, yeah, that's only one side of the story. I wouldn't know otherwise. <laughs> So I'm no expert on what would be happening otherwise, and that's only one aspect of a situation in general. So I can't form, I could never form a complete opinion of a place based on the news stories that are coming from the U.S. or anywhere in the world, really. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really, yeah. It doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> like, there's probably some really great things happening everywhere in the world. You just kind of see the kind of the not so great stuff most of the time because it garners the most attention, unfortunately. Yeah. That's kind of a bummer, but. I'm sure it all depends on where you're looking to. Depends what you're looking for as well. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's 
kind of how that goes. <laughs> so basically, um, that's why I look at landscapes and memes and other people's diamond painting pictures progress. I look at a lot of that. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a lot easier to look at than uh, some news stories. I just look at the headlines in news stories. So I don't go reading full page articles, like don't go grabbing a newspaper on purpose just to read the news. No, I get headlines, brief description of what happened, uh, move on. <laughs> That's all I basically do. There's so much to get invested in, in a day, or over even a couple of minutes, like so much data, so much to process, to try and figure out or reason out what the heck is happening, if it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> so it's nice to look like a, at a kitten picture, or a cute fox, or yeah, people's uh, uh, whips progress on their canvases, that's, yeah, that's kind of my social media, and the real world stuff is, yeah, the news, it's not pretty, but yeah, current events, just for that few minutes, and yeah, it leaves an impression irregardless, I guess it, it does force a reaction, current events, and uh, just in general, but yeah, I, you don't have to like know everything. No, it's probably not the best to know everything, but there is need to. But there is you no. Know, yeah, there is a certain comfort level and a certain tolerance uh, in the media and stuff for social media. And, any kind of news, etc. Yeah, there's a point where, yeah, uh, one news station, CP24, uh, it's Toronto. I, they show headlines at the bottom of the screen and then they're doing like a news story on the main part of the screen. Markets and weather are on the screen all at once. Uh, various ads, yeah. it. Just a whole bunch of information on the screen at one time, but they do a news cycle, like a new host, like every few hours. So I do like a lap or a circuit of uh, the news, and it just keeps going throughout the day. But yeah, just pop on there for like 10 or 15 minutes and you have a general idea of world news, politics, what's happening locally in Toronto, yeah, in Canada, etc. And then, yeah, you can just go do something else, but yeah, there are other ways to get the news too, but I'm just like a, get the headlines and yeah, that's it. There'll be news stories that elaborate further on certain headlines for sure that are uh, like main top stories, but, uh, yeah, if I get those, then, yeah, but other than that, I try not to just soak myself in the news. Yeah, I won't cover current events too majorly on here. A casual mention, that's really about it. <laughs> I have talked about COVID and stuff, of course, but that's like a pretty major event right now. That yeah, it's kind of more than a news story. It's kind of like a world event. But yeah, even then, I don't talk about it too happily on here. All right.
Uh, let's do an, uh, another symbol here. Finish the upside down tetramino. Uh, tetramino is from Tatris, so yeah, it's a uh, piece in Tatris, or yeah, what the pieces are called. Tetraminos. So the upside down T, yeah, is one of those one of those shapes that you can use to make lines in Tetris. So here you go. <laughs> I did play Tetris heavily at one time, and eh, I still good, but yeah, it's one of those games, one of my go-to games. Yeah, I do like a good couple of rounds of Tetris. Okay, number five. Yeah, it's just this kind of. grayish color it's a it's a skin tone kind of thing so yeah that I'm pretty happy with the how the this guy's face is turning out up close it looks like uh what the heck too dark or whatever then you step back and it's like oh okay they did a pretty good job on it. That yeah, looks pretty good, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, bear that in mind when you're diving and painting too. If something looks too dark, skin tone or something, or yeah, shadowing, just take a few steps back and look a little further away and see how you feel about it after that. Yeah, so. From what I've seen thus far, uh, yeah, it, it looks great. Up close, it's like, uh, this is a garble of wood. <laughs> this guy has a nasty sunburn. And it's <laughs> no, but it works out. Uh, it's shading on his face. It, it works out very well. I, I'm pretty happy with it, so. Yeah, not tweaking anything on the canvas. I'm just following the symbols accordingly, and they've done an excellent job on Skin tone can be tricky on to map out on a canvas for sure. I've heard that tons of times. Yeah, and I, I believe that. I can believe that. Yeah, it can be hard to replicate replicate some uh, items or pictures to uh, canvas. Yeah, you usually have to render, make a picture bigger, like render it larger to get all the detail, so. Yeah, Diamond Art Club learned that a couple times, not to pick on them or anything, just, uh, yeah, uh, they really to design, like, Halloween-themed design, or yeah, kind of that style of design. Yeah, not necessarily Halloween, but... Yeah, and they knew right off the get-go that the eyes weren't working for the... in the piece, so they discontinued the piece. Uh, sold what stock they had, and then... Yeah, discontinued the piece. Lonely Girl or something? Yeah, it's kind of... Relatively newer artist, but... They released it like released that canvas but yeah they agreed that uh the eyes didn't render the woman's eyes didn't render too good in that picture that's okay like it's not gonna be a hundred percent perfect render every time it happens and they acknowledged it people yeah diamond pain painters noticed and all that Cat scratching at the door, door and all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's going to be certain canvases that don't render exactly like the art piece. Like, yeah, that's a given. Another thing to bear in mind, but yeah, when you're getting a diamond painting, yeah, you want as close to the source material as you can, but. Yeah, some pieces will get 
tweaked or some segments might get omitted or the colors will be slightly different but that's the company has to work with what DMC colors they have to get close to the source material. And if it's like a painting that's being rendered, yeah, you're not going to get uh, exact uh, replication of brush strokes, for example. Certain textures and, yeah, shadowing and... and the original piece are may very well be lost or not as detailed in a canvas uh, rendering unless the canvas is a fairly generous size to capture all the details so and yeah from Diamond Air Club's vantage point or any diamond painting company's vantage point, there's kind of a fine balance between uh, what size of canvas is reasonable for the general public or their customers and uh, yeah, giving you a good quality piece to purchase and work with in order to finish it in a half decent amount of time. Yes, a few diamond painting companies do have huge canvases in general because of how they were rendered. The Randall Spanglers, for example, are very large pieces, a few of them. There are a couple small, smaller uh, Randall Spangler pieces, but for the amount of detail that's in those art pieces, for example. Yeah, they have to be a fairly large size. And there's a lot going on in those Randall Spanglers, for sure. But yeah, that's just an example. Nothing, <laughs> nothing exclusive, just based, I'm um, just relaying based on my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, it's just describing it in that fashion. Yeah, it all depends what you're diamond painting to. If it's, uh, I don't know, like a character, for example, and that's basically what the picture is, like a character's face or something, and there's very limited background, the canvas may be smaller to an extent and the focus will be on that character or subject in the picture. So the canvas may be warranted to be a bit smaller or larger if there is detail in, like say she was the uh, individuals wearing a dress in the picture or something and you have to get like shadowing and like the fabric texture and all that and they had a, a locket or something on their uh, chest yeah so canvas size is basically a resolution like a map or rendering to capture as much detail as possible and yeah but yes there are uh, diamond painters who want to do smaller canvases uh, on a regular basis hey yeah, that's awesome uh, and there are other diamond painters that want to do big and small canvases uh, do a big canvas then take a break on a snack canvas or a smaller canvas for a bit uh, could be colors too. Uh, work on something really colorful or dull in nature, like a darker kind of picture. It, you'd want a boost of color in a canvas. Just kind of re-engage you. <laughs> yeah, we're we're all different, and yeah, what we choose for uh, to work on for canvases is 
very engaging and interesting. All at the same time, because uh, we all get information and uh, purchase from various different uh, stores and sometimes like uh, exclusive places. No problem with that either. No, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I just want to kind of explore a cross section of different diamond painting companies for sure, but not just be on one. I'm not affiliated with anybody, any diamond painting company. So yeah, it's just kind of nice to explore. Like, yeah, I kind of like seeing what's out there, more oriented towards what the art piece is. Like this night horse was pretty cool. Uh, I think I bought it to help Lizzie. I used her discount code or something. Lizzie's World of Gems, I believe, or something. Yeah, I. She's a fellow Canadian. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. I got a discount on this. Like fifteen or something percent off. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of like a a commission for her, I guess. Yeah, it, it was a while ago too, so. Diamond Art Club, uh, every time you get a kid, like, there's a couple discount codes that you can use, uh, one per order. Yeah, all their diamond painting companies probably give you a discount code too. Like, 15 or 20% off, uh, your purchase. And then free shipping to a certain extent sometimes, uh, after a certain amount of, uh, certain dollar amount, like your order amount. So, yeah, it's all good. I'm always going to say uh, diamond pay what you're interested in, craft what you're interested in. Yeah, don't necessarily go buy, like, new releases. If it's not your thing, if <laughs> there's a certain artist or a design that's not your thing, yeah, don't have to go and buy it, just uh, do what. Work on what you love working on. That's just like an option for somebody else. <laughs> That's an opportunity for somebody else to get into diamond painting or uh, be their painting that they've been looking for. So yeah, there's tons of options out there and alternatives. Because yeah, not all diamond painting kits are like necessarily attainable for everybody but yeah no judgment here ever no yeah, just get what you can afford for sure always like be within your budget <laughs> yeah don't and don't ever feel ashamed that you're that you can't get a, like a certain brand of no never be ashamed of that no, oh, you're, you're still diamond painting. I, that's how I'll always look at it. If you have a canvas, no matter what size or where it's from, you're, you're still diamond painting. It's still the hobby. And always will be, irregardless. So don't let it, any of that stigma get you. You're, you're still part of the crafting community. If you choose to be engaged with a with the community. You'll be welcomed with open arms, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's like a positive outlet, for sure, to uh, be part of a diamond painting group or a crafting hobby group that are based around your interests, for sure. Yeah, it's just not diamond painting, but <laughs> cross-stitch, crochet, crochet, Knitting, yeah, loom, loom knitting, or loom, whatever that is. Yeah, there are 
tons of different hobbies out there and yeah a couple Facebook groups that I'm in are just craft oriented it's like somebody does those that does miniatures and there's somebody else that uh in the group that uh carves diamond painting pens like it's different hobbies and uh disciplines that are based around crafting so in general so yeah <laughs> you get to counter cross stitch or make cover minders or make candles or syrup or jam preserves you're still making something so yeah just think of it that way you're still creating something okay 25 we get this like a hour last kind of thing okay let's go over here just cover Yeah, because I think this is like the reins of the horse. Yeah, the horse's head, and then there's like a kind of reins. There's like a strap here as well. Yeah, so no matter what craft you're doing or hobby you're pursuing, heck, you could like putting jigsaw puzzles together and you could post a picture of uh, you finishing a jigsaw puzzle like <laughs> you're still making something with your hands it's technically a kid jigsaw puzzle is a kid and you're assembling a picture like I wouldn't see that as any different really it's a kid <laughs> And it gives you the pieces like what's this then this, this is a kid you have pieces and you're putting a picture together so yeah jigsaw puzzle they just don't say kit it's a puzzle <laughs> but you put it together <laughs> i don't know a puzzle just stuck so yeah it's different shaped pieces that you're putting together yeah, so puzzle, challenge. Yeah, you're figuring out how to assemble the picture. So there's a little bit of difference there, and that's probably why the puzzle part stuck. It, it makes sense. Yeah, it works. I'm not going to argue with it. <laughs> it. It works that way. But yeah, a couple of groups that I'm in, yeah. Sure, there's one or two that are like diamond painting, yeah, accessories and stuff, but yeah, there's, there's one where it's just multidisciplinary, yeah, multi-craft, yeah. Hey, just post what you're doing. Say hi, make a few friends, hang out. Yeah, bam, here you go. It's awesome to have a hobby and, yeah, be able to relate to somebody who has a similar hobby or your hobby. And, yeah, it's just an open kind of environment. Yeah, and I just, like, uh, do the hug emoji and comment on a few pictures, uh, congratulate people on their progress on a canvas, or if they showed, like, a really cool, uh, painting or something. But yeah, of course, yeah, I encourage, uh, they're to encourage one another. Yeah, it's more than, like, an art piece to a lot of people, it's, a uh, can have a hefty story or meaning behind it or a symbolism behind it and that's all the more important kind of what connects us to hobbies kind of for our psychological emotional or just our health in general our mental health and all that 
I think even on YouTube, there's like a book clubs where a group of people uh, come together and talk about, choose a book and talk about it. I've seen that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to read a lot more than uh, I am right now. <laughs> I'm still trying to get through an audible book. Like, that's just listening to a book, but for uh, sitting here in diamond painting, when I can, it, it's like, yeah, sometimes it's like, uh, takes a lot, a long time to get through an audiobook, but yeah, if you're listening to it constantly, it's gonna feel like, yeah, it's gonna be a breeze to get through, but I don't read every day, and, uh, or listen to audiobooks every day. But, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole other hobby field. For sure. Like, books. Yeah. Yeah, I had mentioned that I like word search books and the occasional Sudoku. Uh, fill-ins, yeah. I like those kind of puzzle books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it just takes me a lot uh, to stick to reading a book. It, yeah. <laughs> there are books where I've sat down and read them in a day. Yeah, that uh, Uh, da Vinci Code or something like there was a book that I just sat down and read throughout the day and finished it that same day that's a very rare occasion in my case to do that kind of thing but there are books out there that are engaging keep you reading for sure yeah that's great <laughs> but holy cow <laughs> it can be tricky to find yeah and you have to fit that kind of stuff into the day it's, yeah it's not easy for everybody some of us have more time than others but absolutely nothing wrong with anybody's lifestyle whatsoever no judgment here it, it's what you choose to do with your time too so, yeah, <laughs> I could just sit on YouTube for longer than I really should, looking at really just relaxing stuff, like just goofy stuff, when, yeah, I could be doing other stuff, but it doesn't get distracted by social media or TikTok or whatever. It's a distraction. <laughs> and that can be good every once in a while. Just to not really invest time in something that's like emotionally taxing or whatever. You, you just want to relax. Unwind. Yeah, that kind of idea. Yeah, there there are times where you just want to just relax, just unwind after a rough day or something. Yeah, that that's healthy to do too. That's yeah. Healthy to take a break from the everyday and just yeah, watch a couple cat videos or something. Watch a couple of funny memes. Yeah, just laugh a little or whatever. Yeah, that's healthy. Nothing wrong with that. We just all need that, like, outlet to unwind and to concentrate, to focus. Yeah, it's a different mindset for, like, each situation as well, so. Or there are days where you're like, yeah, I want to do this section of my diamond painting. 
and you never get to it because everybody and their brother is after you or whatever or just something comes up and you're just totally detracted from what you're doing oh worry it's happened to me too where it's like you're looking at your canvas or current crafting project and you're like yeah i'd rather be here than doing what i have to do like right now <laughs> But you gotta do those real life things too. Even if they're not the greatest things to be doing. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a mix, quite a balance. But uh, yeah, we all have to do it to a certain extent. Just at different uh, times. Yeah, just be nice to sit down and relax all the time. But yeah, I I kind of have to shake myself too. It's like, yeah, there's just some things that you have to do <laughs> in order to function properly, for sure. No, oh, yeah, always a couple things to think about anyway. Stuff I think about all the time, really. Oh, 51? Wow. Uh, quick going hour. Hopefully the camera angle's right. There's <laughs> a couple of whipping chats back. Yeah, my camera was not playing nice. And, uh... Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of a, basically a podcast. <laughs> Simply it became a really small image podcast with some sort of uh, commentary. <laughs> I was doing this, but yeah, the how the camera recorded, it just created a really small uh, rotated image. As if you're looking at your phone vertically. I think that's how it was like filming. Because uh, the auto rotation didn't turn properly when I started recording that hour. I just posted it, but I, yeah, every once in a while that happens and it's like, yeah, I really don't want to. I've, yeah, deleted a couple videos of that nature where the image was just yeah screwed up but yeah I try not to post those constantly but every once in a while yeah i'm sure there's going to be a video where i've had to edit the rotation i've had to rotate the video and it just gives you a basically widescreen edition <laughs> oh well, every once in a while, it's just one of those things, but, you know, it happens, it just kind of just go, yeah, okay, oops, and yeah, okay, uh, D, oh, you gotta have those quirks every once in a while, like, it's like, yeah, not the end of the world if, uh, trying to get a podcast edition of, uh, <laughs> Diamond Penny. But it, it is nice to look at, be able to look at a canvas and a little bit of more of a fuller screen. Yeah, I do understand that implicitly, for sure. Yeah, let's try not to have a screwed up camera all the time. But, yeah, it... Yeah, it's just how I filmed the rotation thing. That's all it is. Yeah, there there is a setting where you can like turn off the auto rotation, but nah, it's just something else you have to play with all the time, tweak with. Okay, number two is capital D. Yeah, basically focused a lot on a. Uh, 
guy's face. <laughs> it's like skin tones at this point. For the most part in this section. Uh, I'm just looking for a D over here. F, I think. Yeah, there's some D at the top here. Yeah, the horse's reins again. I think that's a D. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is generally a skin tone. Okay, D. It's capital D. Yeah, this is the color that I think looks really dark, but it works for the shading of uh, the knight's face. Yes, looks like he got sunburnt like right up close, but looking back, it's like, oh, that's really effective shadowing. Good job. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah, but you know, a mix of ideas float through anybody's brain in a given day. Yeah, it's pretty constant. Thinking about just strange things. <laughs> it's a constant cycle. And then you go to sleep and yeah, deer knows what you're processing in sleep through dreams and all that. Does anybody remember if they dream or not? There's a couple really distinct uh, dreams or slash nightmares I've had where you're like waking up sweating or you're just jolted awake. I've had a couple of those for sure. But anybody just like remember any vivid dreams or whatever? Kind of a random question. <laughs> I don't do it very often. I just kind of go all over, all over the place topic-wise in these whipping chats, just so you know. Just kind of chatting sometimes. Getting a commentary up and then sometimes I'm just quiet and sparse in these. <laughs> it's kind of chill. Usually because I'm like really concentrating on a hardcore section a really busy section where uh, symbols are scattered. Yeah, so if I do go quiet in some weapon chats, yeah, it's just, I just got focused on uh, what was going on on the canvas, so. When I color, yeah, I tend to get pretty quiet. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a coloring chat, but. Yeah, just every once in a while I gotta do that commentary. Just gotta make sure you're just not uh, watching a silent film. That's gotta be tricky to do. There's some YouTube videos, like gameplay uh, playthroughs, where they're just playing the game and there's like no, there's just like game audio and all that. And they're just, yeah, that's fine. And I don't mind those, but yeah. Just like no talking, it's just gameplay. <laughs> Or just what they're doing. <laughs> it's kind of awkward, but it's like what you wanted to watch because you clicked on the video. Yeah, it's just basically here it is. Okay, enjoy. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't know. It's all good. Uh, I watch those. But where are we now? Okay, so yeah, you've been watching uh, Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. As always, in the description below, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I have some social media uh, links in the description below. Uh, Facebook profile page, my first and last name, like my full name, as you'll find me on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook business page. It's just like an extension or update kind of page for uh, YouTube here. 
just posting pictures and updates about the channel and my progress on canvases, etc. I usually post like finished sections. You'll get meditation kind of quotes, uh, my Facebook and I also have an Instagram uh, tag down there. So yeah. Yeah, you'll see meditation quotes from a couple different apps, uh, Calm and uh, Headspace. Yeah, it's just like a quote based on uh, the meditation uh, session I had. Uh, they're like 10 minute sessions to meditate. I meditate on a regular basis. It used to be every day, but yeah, my uh, work schedule sometimes that doesn't happen, so. But anyway, uh, take care, all the best with your crafting endeavors, uh, stay safe out there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.